Donald Trump has time to tweet, but he doesn't have time for national intelligence briefings. He said this recently, I've had a lot of briefings that are very, I don't want to say scary, because I'll solve the problems, which might lead you to believe that he sort of gets the level of responsibility, the threats that our country is facing. And so he's, he's admitting that. It's a rare, honest, open moment from Donald Trump. Unfortunately, uh, we're going to go here to uh, video 13. Uh, he's not actually following it up with any change of behavior. I just want to ask you about your skepticism about the intelligence community. You are getting the presidential daily brief yes. only once a week. Well, I, I get it when I need it. But is, it, is there I, some know, skepticism? I, first of all, these are very good people that are giving me the briefings. And I say, if something should change from this point, immediately call me. I'm available on one minute's notice. I don't have to be told, you know, I'm like a smart person. I don't have to be told the same thing and the same words every single day for the next eight years. Could be eight years, but eight years. I don't need that. But I do say, if something should change, let us know. So th this is really close to the election, and there are two things that are immediately clear about how little he knows about the actual job of the presidency. One, he thinks the president is so not busy that he can be on one minute's notice for phone calls, which isn't exactly how it works out. And two, he doesn't realize, he says, if anything changes, call me. If anything changes in the world, call me. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. Your phone's going to be ringing all day long, buddy. No, so, but the first part, sorry, sorry to interrupt you, but the very first part of his answer is laughable because he's like, I I'll get them when I need them. How would you know whether or not you need them? Like, do you Let's have like the, the ability to predict that, that there's some sort of crisis happening in some country or that there's some imminent threat right. to national security? How would you know? Now, like, I've got to add something there because what you guys are saying is so important. I want people to uh, understand the context. So if it turns out North Korea is about to launch nukes. Yes, then you would call the president that minute, but you would get that call no matter what, whether you had the briefings or you didn't have the briefings. The briefings aren't for that. They aren't for emergencies. They are so that you can prepare. So that you can know, hey, here's the state of North Korea, here's the state of Germany, here's the state of Pakistan, here's the state of the world, right? Let's plan ahead so that I don't have to call you in a minute and say they're launching the nukes. Yeah. So, but if you're not at all prepared and you have no idea what's going on, when they call you in a panic, you don't. You never got the briefing on North Korea. You don't know what to do. Mm -hmm. You don't know how many missiles yeah. they have pointed at South Korea. You don't know if you did it. You know, you go in by ground or by air. Oh, the, the generals will tell me the same generals who used to insult every day on the campaign, right? But you've got to be able to be ready on the spot. And yeah. he goes, oh, I'll get them when I need them because I'm like a smart person. A smart person prepares. Yeah. They don't just and go around and go, oh, there's an emergency. I'll figure it out in a minute. <laughs> And the smartest people I know always refer to themselves as like a smart person. <laughs> <laughs> I have some of the characteristics of a smart person. Um, so can I make one quick point about that, though? So I, I don't know it. I'm not smart enough to know anything about the presidential briefings and how important they are. I'm going to assume they're important. Uh, but someone smarter than me made the case that maybe the silver lining here is that if the president doesn't have these briefings every day, he's not hearing from these guys who want to go to war every day, meaning CIA and his NSA and all the other people who want to go to war. So he doesn't get these briefings, so maybe it'll keep us out of war. I don't know if that's well, the case. Let me take that hope away from you, unfortunately. Okay. <laughs> because obviously somebody is going to have to go to these briefings. I mean, look, we, we, we basically had under George W. Bush a guy who wasn't smart enough or involved enough to make decisions, but there were people lurking in the background. And of course, Trump does have that. Uh, let's go to video 14 here. Now, in the meantime, my generals are great, are being briefed, and Mike Pence is being briefed, who is, by the way, one of my very good decisions. He's terrific. And they're being briefed, and I'm being briefed also. But I don't need to be told, Chris, the same thing every day, every morning, same words. Sir, nothing has changed. Let's go over it again. I don't need that. He might turn things over to the generals or Mike Pence or you know somebody else, and maybe those people will make the right decisions. Maybe they will opt for more stability than Donald Trump would be able to provide if he was more involved on a day-to-day -day basis, but maybe not. And I mean, this is a guy who says that he's a good manager, and he's also saying, I'm going to do no managing. Yeah. So what he just told you in that clip is that Mike Pence is president. <laughs> yeah. Which he told us months ago. Mm -hmm. He said he'd do that. Yeah. And uh, mm -hmm. so he also said, I don't need the same words every day. I, I have a feeling as busy as Barack Obama is, and the change in their hair during their eight years of being a president implies that they're very busy. I don't think he would sit there for hours every day if it was the same words. 
he seems to think there's like five countries in the world. <laughs> Depending on how you define it, there's like 170 to 200 countries in the world. Stuff happens every day, governments change, people go to war, there's civil wars and things like that. Um, now I do wanna compare it to the level of preparation and I guess interest in the specifics and in the facts of other administrations like the one that just left. This is graphic 18A. The Obama administration has written 275 briefing papers for the incoming Trump administration, nearly 1,000 pages of classified material specific to North Korea's nuclear program, the military campaign against the Islamic State, tensions in the South China Sea, and every other kind of threat the new team could face in its first weeks in office. Nobody in the current administration knows whether anyone in the next has read any of it. And that... Look, that could possibly work if you were running your transition the way other presidents have, where the top 10% of each cabinet department tends to switch over those of the political appointments, but everybody else, the career officials who study this stuff, know this stuff, stay. But they've also talked about weeding all those people out too. And if they're not gonna study and they get rid of all the people who do study, what happens when there's more tension in the South China Sea or when ISIS starts to make moves? No one will be around who understands how to counter it. And I'll give you a very specific example of a presidential daily briefing that was skipped that wound up having some significant mm -hmm. consequences. When uh, George Bush in his first year in office uh, was on vacation in Crawford uh, and he was on his ranch for a whole month in August. He took a month off as president. They were giving them break. He was better than Trump and then he was theoretically receiving the briefings every day. He didn't he wasn't brazen enough to say, "No, I'll just skip them," right? He pretended to get them. But one day they come in and they give him a briefing on how Osama bin Laden is determined to attack inside the United States. Well, he skipped that one. He told him, I got it. You covered your ass. Yes. Now go home. Mm -hmm. Okay. You covered your ass. So he skipped that briefing. That briefing turned out to be really, really important. And when he got a call later and he needed to respond in a minute, the towers were already gone. If you like this Young Turks video, wait till you get a load of Young Turks membership. So many more shows and no ads at all. Come and see. TYTnetwork.com slash join.